Hello everybody and welcome to this week's video. For this week I wanted to do this more illustrative style uh, avocado egg painting. The materials used in this painting will be listed in the description box below, uh, but let's get into them here. I used the Mission Gold watercolors, I used Autumn Orange, Lemon Yellow, Sap Green, Van Dyke Green, and Light Red. I used the Princeton Velvet Touch Long Round Number no. 6 brush, Amethyst brushes in number no. 2 and number no. 30, and then used a Sable brush. For the paper, I used Arches Rough Paper, but you could also use a cold press paper if you don't like the rough texture. And getting into this painting, I used the lemon yellow for the egg yolk and I'm doing a really light wash with this because it does have a lot of white and light areas in it so I wanted to start really light to allow those to show through and then for the avocado I'm using a mixture of sap green and a bit of lemon yellow I want this to have a really creamy look to it I, I want it to be somewhere between that really nice kind of green color and the lemon yellow that I'm using just so it has that kind of nice fleshy look to it that an avocado has. And I am adding light red and I'm also using some of that autumn orange to come up with that really kind of beautiful salmon color. You could use something like a permanent red if you wanted to. Uh, but I like to stick with limited color palettes with the paintings that I do. So trying to stick with colors that I know I'm going to use in other parts of the painting are important to me. Now for the outside of the avocado, I did have a bit of a difficult time trying to get the color just right in this painting. So to start it off, I am using the Van Dyke Green. And I'm just kind of going in around the bottom and the outside. Uh, this is going to end up being almost black by the time I'm done. So I, I'm really not sure why I went in so uh, lightly with it, but that's just how I paint. So now I'm going back to the yolk and I'm adding another color or another glaze. And you can see it a little bit more here, but I'm being kind of patchy with it. The reference photo that I used had this almost kind of overcooked look to it. So you could see that it was a little bit darker around the edges and you could see some darker spots on top. Like I would probably say it was an over hard egg. Uh, so focusing on those areas was important to me and I'm not being really all of all that careful with it. I'm letting it be really kind of patchy. And I'm going back in with the same kind of, uh, with the same color mixture that I was using before. I'm just darkening that and I'm being careful to darken around the outside of the salmon piece because the little tail that is sticking out is not only curved down but it was also kind of burnt in the reference. So I wanted that to be darker and then darkening the areas around the outside of the salmon and around the outside of the egg and the herb sprigs, I wanted those to uh, be darker to show shadow. And then you could see I'm just, I was redoing the yellow in there and now I'm going in and I'm working on the fleshy part of the avocado and just doing a mixture of the sap green around the outside before going back and darkening the area of the salmon following the same steps that I had uh, just gone over with making sure to darken around the egg and around the outside to show uh, some depth and some and some shadow. Now that the area of the avocado had cooled, I wanted to go back in with a little bit more of that sap green mixture. I did make sure to add some yellow in it this time, and I also wanted to add some yellow around the uh, salmon piece in my photo, uh, not only to kind of enhance that fleshy color, but to also uh, give it the look of shadow. And now I'm working on some of those little, uh, like, bacon bits or spices or something that was on top, but I liked them and I wanted to keep them in the reference. So I did use the light red for that. And while I was there, I also darkened up around the egg and I'm going back in with a smaller brush and I am uh, darkening areas of the salmon. And I'm also being sure to uh, put in all of these little lines and details and kind of fleshy qualities that the piece of salmon had. Uh, it's kind of hard to really describe uh, the texture that was in it. It was very different. Some of it 
was just these uh, little vertical areas. Some of them had these little lines and uh, kind of square areas and the, the shading was all different with uh, each little segment. So really what I did was just pay attention to each little piece that I was doing. You can see I'm doing little squares here and shading in the direction that it had in the reference photo. And I'm going through and I'm adding some of those lines, paying attention to which way that it is shaded and where I'm going to keep the areas really, really light. So I do go back in and I am starting to darken the outside of the avocado uh, skin again. And for this one, I did use the same Van Dyke green, but I wanted to uh, deepen it a little bit. So I added some light red and I also added a little bit of my uh, lemon yellow to give it this uh, really kind of deep quality. Uh, the sap green with Mission Gold is a really, really beautiful green, uh, but I did want to make it a little bit more earthy. You could also use the olive green from them if you wanted to. And now I'm going in and I'm adding the kind of darker bacon bit uh, pieces. There was a little bit of color variation between the bits that were added to it, so I wanted to try to make sure to show that and kind of differentiate some of the pieces that were there. And since I didn't really love uh, the sparsity of them, I did go through and add a few more uh, than what I had originally put for my reference. And this uh, painting, uh, I know it's a little bit all over the place, but for this one it really was just adding lots of small details and going back in and reinforcing some of those uh, shadows and the shading and the details that I had added before. Uh, there was something about this painting where I felt like I was going in too cautiously and doing too many layers overall. I'm really not sure what it was, but in the end I did end up getting really frustrated uh, with this painting and not getting the results that I had wanted. So I did end up leaving it for about a week before coming back to it and just kind of cheating a little bit. Um, well, I'm, it's not cheating but uh, for a watercolor tutorial is shooting a little bit uh, and finishing it with some colored pencil. So now I'm going in and avocado when you cut into it it does have this kind of darker outside to it and it also has a little bit of uh, splitting and like just natural cracks where like the the creamy kind of inside avocado piece was pulling away from the skin so I wanted to show that darker outside where uh, it was closer to the skin and I also wanted to have some of those little kind of cracks and crevices and just, you know, these natural little areas in the avocado and uh, emphasize those. So now for these little herb sprigs, I'm going in and I'm being very, very careful. I'm using my Amethyst 3.0 liner brush and I'm adding the Van Dyke Green. Since these are really, really thin, I'm not being too careful about all of the little details in them, uh, which is kind of, you know, one of the things I didn't have to worry about with this piece since it did end up looking a little bit more illustrative than realistic in the end, but that is just, you know, how I ended up doing uh, this painting. So I'm going through and I'm darkening all of the uh, the areas again. I'm adding a darker line around the edge of the salmon because I want it to have a little bit of a 3D look to it. One thing I didn't do in this painting was add a lighter edge just above it, but if you wanted to kind of emphasize that uh, 3D nature of it, you could also go through and do that with your painting. And like I said, there is a lot of texture in these avocados when you cut into them. So I'm just stippling in some of my paint mixture. Uh, I'm using mostly the sap green and I kind of go back and forth between mixing it with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of that uh, Van Dyke green to kind of get a nice mixture uh, in the 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 colors that I'm using really focusing on my my reference photo and the texture that I see in the photo that I'm using now you can see I'm going in and I'm really starting to darken up this color uh, since I did know that I wanted it to be closer to black this is my Van Dyke green mixed with the red light and I think that is probably one of the closest matches that I ended up getting 
like I said, you could just go in and do that all in one shot and you don't have to sit there and, you know, do all of these layers like I did. Uh, part of the purpose of doing these tutorials is kind of talking through not only what I did and my process, but also just kind of letting you know some of the things that you could you could do differently or I didn't do as well. And some of that is just how I tend to paint. And some of it, to be quite honest, isn't the most efficient. So if you don't want to go through all of these steps if you find that you just want to get the really dark green on the first go, if you want to do a wet on wet with the egg yolk and just, you know, paint it in and dab in these darker colors, if you just want to go for it, then go for it. And you certainly don't have to follow uh, all of the steps that I take, but I do like to show it for how I blend and layer because uh, I do think for some pieces it does make a difference in the end. Uh, I don't believe this was one of them. So you could see that I went in and I was just darkening up the edge of that egg yolk and I'm going in darkening up pieces of the salmon and I'm adding shadows on the sides of the herb sprigs. And now I took a um, a fine liner and I'm adding little pieces of pepper. I thought it would be a really nice touch to this painting and there's something about adding pepper to it that adds a really nice realistic quality to it and I am just kind of dotting this in more stippling but I'm also being careful to make it look like it's cracked black pepper. So I'm adding some larger pieces, some circles, ovals, little squares, and I'm really not trying to be too precise or too careful. I'm just being really kind of free and fun with it. And since I wasn't loving how this was coming out anyway, I did decide to go through and outline uh, some of the, the line work in here. Since this is a really, really fine uh, pen. I think it's a point one or point two. It's definitely one of the tinier ones. It's a really, really small touch. You can see that it did add some definition to the painting, but it didn't distract from it. And since I kind of had a better idea of where things were, uh, I'm, again, I'm going through and I'm just darkening things. One thing I did do was want to add some texture and some shadows to the white of the egg and I used the same color around the painting to add some more shadows uh, because I added some uh, dioxazine violet to my lemon yellow and I just kind of added in these little shadows around the egg yolk and uh, just some little spots to make it look like the egg wasn't just this perfectly flat smooth surface. Now with the shadow, I'm using indigo blue, and I have to be quite honest with you, I, <laughs> I didn't do this too well. Uh, I'm still learning this uh, paper. Like I said, I'm using the Arches Rough, and it handles water a little bit differently than a cold press paper. So I did end up getting the shadow to look a little bit weird, but what I decided to do was just extend that around the piece and it added a little bit more depth. I will say one of the mistakes I made at this point was not rinsing out my water before getting into this. So I noticed that the the shadows ended up being a little bit muddy when I faded out the colors and that really kind of showed up in the final painting that I have. You can actually see uh, this line in the paper itself. If that doesn't bother you, then feel free to just go ahead and use your, your dirty water. Uh, but that is something that I would say to do and it's something that I wish I had done. So here I'm just adding a couple of little, you know, final touches to things, cleaning up some lines since there was a lot of detail in this piece. I felt like there were a couple of areas where I missed uh, areas around the bacon bits or the pepper or the little sprigs or the egg, so I just wanted to touch that up. And here I am a week later and I decided that it just wasn't enough detail for me. If you want to skip this part, you absolutely can. If you want to do it in watercolor, you can. Uh, but I'm just kind of emphasizing some of the, the details that I already had since I was just really unhappy with this piece. Uh, the darker bit that you can see me emphasizing right now, that could very easily be done in watercolor. 
And again, adding the, the yellow and just these little darker areas could also be done extremely easily. You don't have to do this step. Um, but it was just something that I decided that I w wanted to do and uh, I like how it came out. I think you don't really notice it as a whole. This part, adding this kind of like an okra color around the outside of the avocado added a really nice realistic touch in person. It was something that was in my photo, but I wasn't able to get it the way I wanted to in my painting. If this is something that you want to do, then really don't worry about it. Like, it, there's no shame in going in with colored pencil to get it the look that you want in your final painting. Uh, and it's something that I don't do very often, but I like doing it. And when it comes to the colored pencils I use, I don't know the colors. It's one of those things where I really just look at the lead of the pencil. You can actually see me holding it up to the areas I'm about to color in. And if the lead is the color that I want, then I just grab it and go. Uh, I'm not really all that specific with paying attention to the color pencil name or uh, anything else. It's not an exact science. Uh, so that's just kind of how I do it. And I'm reinforcing some of those little details. And I also used a white gel pen to add a couple of little highlights um, around the painting, especially to the egg. And that is it for this week's painting. I hope you enjoyed this little talk through slash tutorial. Uh, I know it's probably not one of my, my better tutorials, uh, but I did want to share this painting, share this progress, share the steps that I took, and kind of talk through some of the things that I didn't do so well and the things that I would change in the future. Uh, if you like this video, please let me know. Uh, I would be happy to read your comments and your feedback. Uh, I will talk to you all next time. Bye!